It may sound cheesy, but dairy holds a special place in our hearts, or should I say our refrigerators? And with June being National Dairy Month, it's a good time to revisit these classic food groups while also taking a new look at the evolving world of dairy. Here to help us dig into some dairy-inspired questions, we have Chef Jamie Gwen. Hey, Chef. Hey, so glad to be with you. Yeah, it is time to dig in. If you could check out my spread, all of which, by the way, made better by the dairy aisle. Okay, I love seeing all of this because I do love dairy myself. So what makes the dairy aisle a constant favorite for people? Every time I go to the store, I always see a ton of people there getting what they need. Why is that? Of course, I think if you consider that it's not really an aisle anymore, right? <laughs> the dairy aisle has come a long way. I call it dairy and beyond. It's the entire back wall of your grocery store. And that's a testament to progression, to progress. The fact that, you know, you could be lactose intolerant and love the dairy aisle or vegan or plant-based because the products are endless in their innovation and in their deliciousness. It is not just traditional staples like milk and cheese and butter anymore. According to the National Frozen and Refrigerated Foods Association, the dairy aisle has actually evolved over the past year mm. and years past more progressively than anything else in the grocery store. And when you think about it, you know, whether you love traditional milk, which we drink a lot of milk in this house, I have a three-year-old, <laughs> I still buy the milk substitutes or I love almond milk and all the flavors it comes in now. Oat milk still gaining popularity. In fact, it started its uh, popularity growth, I should say, uh, with baristas in Europe who used oat milk to make the best foam for a cappuccino. Uh -huh. But it's so rich and delicious, I love to bake with it. So no matter how you eat, your lifestyle choice, your dietary needs, you will find something you love in the dairy aisle. And June being National Dairy Month, what a wonderful time to explore, right? Yeah, and I didn't know that about oat milk and the, how it originated, but that's super cool. I do like my oat milk and my almond milk and you've done some dairy fields exploration of your own. What are the latest trends and offerings in the dairy section? We're seeing a lot of plant-based, right? A lot of vegan, um, a lot of really good melting cheese that isn't quite cheese, which I think is wonderful. Um, the yogurt section is more grandiose and vast than ever. And I happen to be a Greek yogurt lover. So I love that my breakfast yogurt has all my favorite fixins. And I love that traditional Greek yogurt goes into my recipes for that added extra tang. You're also gonna find in the dairy aisle uh, on the go snacks, meal options, protein packed ingredients, uh, beverages. It's definitely a trending place. And I think that what's most important to note is right now, you're gonna get the best deals for National Dairy Month in June. So stock up on those things that you love. You know, now's the time to buy up butter. Mm. Okay, I'm going to make sure I get my butter when I come home today, head to the store. And can you enlighten us about the transformation <laughs> of the dairy aisle from, I mean, you were mentioning, you know, from cow-based milk to butter and to cheese. There's so much more now in the dairy aisle, like you were mentioning, uh, dairy and beyond, like you said. <laughs> Yes, and it is more than just dairy, right? Like your favorite orange juice and your favorite cold brew all come from the dairy aisle. So consider my honey orange pull apart cake. It's like monkey bread, but better. And everything comes from the dairy aisle. In fact, cream cheese to make it rich, that tangy deliciousness of orange juice. The exterior is all caramelized and delicious and the interior is fluffy. Breakfast, brunch could be dessert. Uh, maybe you want to up your Benedict game. I never met anybody who didn't love Eggs Benedict. And this is the easiest way. This is my overnight Eggs Benedict casserole. And what do you do? Well, you soak English muffins in an egg and milk and butter mixture overnight in the fridge, and then you pop it in the oven the next day. You will be a culinary hero. You never have to poach eggs again, and it is scrumptious. I make my hollandaise in the blender, by the way. It's foolproof. This is a summer tomato tart where the puff pastry came from the freezer section. You get that lovely flaky crust, right? Like a flatbread almost. And then three cheeses, mm. uh, cheddar, mozzarella, and Parmesan <laughs> and juicy tomatoes of the season. 
This is how you elevate your summer soirees. It's really simple to make. Don't tell anybody because it looks <laughs> ultra impressive. This is a Mediterranean snack platter made better by the dairy aisle because it has a, a Greek feta dip. It has a homemade tzatziki and then everything you love to dip in it. And then this might be the best part. So if you want to up your coffee game, I think that this is next level. You get your cold brew from the dairy aisle because, by the way, that's where it tastes best. Oh. And then you use your milk of choice. Now, I drink regular milk, but this toasted marshmallow almond milk creamer is luscious. And once I build the iced coffee, I top it with marshmallows or marshmallow fluff. Oh. And I, I brulee or torch the top. It's a s'mores iced coffee, and it's out of this world. Oh, my gosh. You gave us so many good recipes. I zoned in on that honey orange pull-apart cake, so I'm going to have to figure out how to make that, Chef. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to let our viewers know where they can go for more information. You can go to easyhomemills.com.